Hello and welcome to all. With no classified difficulties along the route, a mass sprint seems to be the logical outcome of this stage. However, with wind forecast on the second half of the route, it's highly likely that the splintered peloton will enter Chateauroux. We've got enough of a points lead for the polka dot jersey. There's no way we can lose it today. Keep it up! Guys, today there's a good chance that the wind will create bordures. You're going to have to be up front at the right time. Keep your eyes open. Things are livening up at the head of the peloton. It is not always a good idea to be too many in a breakaway, as the others will not necessarily want to cooperate with us. <sighs> Guys, at the beginning of this tour, the sprinters will not allow breakaways. If there are more than five or six riders in front, the sprinters will get their teammates to ride. He's a relatively complete puncher without major strong or weak points. It looks like you've got an exit slip from the peloton. It's riding quietly. He's a complete rider with no real weaknesses. He climbs, rides, and sprints not too bad. He doesn't seem to want to let you have more of a lead, and his teammates are pushing hard. It's going to be a game of cat and mouse. To target the overall standing, do not strain yourself during flat stages in order to keep the maximum in reserve for when the mountains come around. Very good ruler. He broke the hour record. It's best not to give Matthias Brendler too much of a lead. His best chance of victory is to try a break away from far out. When he's not at the beck and call of one of his leaders, Matteo Trentin is a formidable sprinter. He also has the distinction of having won at least one stage on each Grand Tour. Excellent sprinter Alexander Kristoff is one of the sprint world's safe bets.
He's a lead-out man. He's there to pull hard for his sprinter if there's a mass sprint. John Degenkorb is an excellent sprinter who has the particularity of not being too bad on short climbs, unlike many pure sprinters. A good puncher and a good ruler. He must finish alone in order to win because the sprint is a real weakness with him. If Robert Racing no longer figures among the favourites during hilly races, it's mainly due to the fact that now he places all his experience at the service of his leaders. He's a teammate without ambitions for the overall standings. A track specialist who has won several world champion Omnium titles, it is no surprise that Benjamin Thomas shines in time trial races. He notably won the French Championship in 2019. His role is to ride to set up his sprinter's train. Three-time consecutive world champion, a first in the history of cycling, Peter Sagan is one of the most versatile sprinters in the peloton. He's capable of winning whatever the topography of the finish. On a short climb, on the flat, whatever, he's a sure-fire candidate for the green jersey, which he's already won several times. The rider with the most victories to his name during the 2020 season, 14 in all, including four during the Tour of Italy, Arnaud Demar is an all-round roadman sprinter. He notably won Milan San Remo in 2016. He's one of the best sprinters in the peloton. He'll be fighting for the points classification. Able to win world-class races in cyclocross, he was world champion several times, on the road, he won the Amstel Gold Race, or in mountain biking, he won several legs of the World Cup. Mathieu van der Poel is a phenomenon in terms of his level and his versatility. He can count on his qualities as a sprinter in case of a bunched finish, but he can also ratchet up the pressure as he's good over short climbs. He's after the points classification. <sighs> Nicknamed Pocket Rocket because of his diminutive size and unorthodox sprint position, Caleb Ewan is nevertheless one of the top class sprinters. Triple cyclocross world champion, the Belgian Wout van Aert is also able to excel anywhere on the road. We've already seen him win individual time trials, as well as stages that finish in a mass sprint. Not to mention his good performances in the Flanders Classics.
He's a good sprinter. He can harbour ambitions for the points classification. A true sprinter who's not too bad of a short climb. Beware of him in the sprint. He's got a good turn of speed, but he struggles as soon as the road rises a little. He's the best placed rider in the climber standings amongst the breakaway. He's a rider with a big engine, made known at the age of 23 with his world champion title that was won in horrendous weather conditions Mads Petersen has got a good turn of speed that allows him to take part in mass sprint finishes. You must constantly try to shelter from the wind so as not to consume energy. This is what allows a rider to edge clear at the end of the race. Breakaway companions look like they want to up the pace.
the best placed on the overall standings in the breakaway. We're approaching the halfway stage and the riders are readying themselves for the intermediate sprint. The only other classification points to be contested today. He's the best sprinter in the group. Take his wheel if you want to score some points. Guys, you're three kilometers from the intermediate sprint. Watch out! You're not going to be able to attack for much longer!
on flat stages, that's not where you see the most drama. You can accelerate forward if you think that nothing important will happen. The road will be exposed for about 10 kilometers. If there's a sharp bend, it could create brakes. Stay well placed. They're riding hard behind. This isn't the moment to relax. Courage les gars, allez plus vite Teammates have a handle on things for the overall standings. It will be difficult to increase the gap.
Les gars, courage Bravo les gars, c'est bien Comme ça
Allez, gars, courage Allez, les gars The wind is still blowing strong. Stay well placed. Now it's straight, all the way to Chateau Roux. Less than 20 kilometers left for the stage leader. Fifteen kilometers from the finish for the group at the front. His teammates are riding to protect the jersey. His teammates are leading the chase at the head of the peloton. His intentions seem clear. Win in a sprint. There are 10 kilometers left before the finish. The Peloton is riding hard. Stay well placed. The lead group will soon be in Chateau. They've got just under five kilometers to race. Le 
The red pennant is in sight for the front of the race. Last kilometer. There's movement at the head of the peloton. Ladies and gentlemen, applaud him loudly. Here is the winner of the Tour Chateau stage, Matteo Quanta. Congratulations to him. He really was the strongest. He fully deserves this prestigious victory. We can say that everything is going well for him at the moment. He is the yellow jersey of this Tour de France. But Art! He will be able to hang this jersey in his trophy room. Let's hope for him that he can add more. He's in sparkling form and you can clap him loudly. Here's the green jersey of this Tour de France. Matteo Conte! It's a moment that he should not forget and which marks his career. Come on, let's applaud him once more. He's in sparkling form and you can clap him loudly. Here's the polka dot jersey of this Tour de France. Marc Piaget! It's a moment that he should not forget and which marks his career. Come on, let's applaud him once more. We can say that everything is going well for him at the moment. Here's the white jersey of this Tour de France. He will be able to hang this jersey in his trophy room. Let's hope for him that he can add more. Well done, lads. Congratulations to you. We weren't even amongst the outsiders, can you imagine? Well done for this win. We take the green jersey. It's a good day.